Welcome back, everyone. We are at our penultimate lesson 24, Lesson of Divine Justice in the Divine Will, a four-part series of lessons from Father B. Thomas Salsa, given over four separate days of recollection, this one being August 2017. It is lesson seven of eight on that day and lesson 24 of 25. Without further delay, Father B. Thomas Celso, BDV. Fiat. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady, Queen of all saints, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is part 7. Uh, volume 28, May 20th, 1930. My daughter Louisa, each created thing is one distinct member of mine. And as such, I, God, use it to maintain the order, the life of creation. And I, God, use it in order to make use by means of it, now of my divine mercy now of my divine power, and now of my divine justice. So here, Jesus is saying that everything, see, this is why uh, the scriptures tell us that, um, and the mystics tell us, uh, a lot of the mystics you read, uh, a lot of the visionaries, they say uh, there will be fire from heaven, uh, the earth will shake, uh, the stars will fall from the sky, uh, there will be, you know, floods and tidal waves, hail stone, stone, stones. Uh, he says, each created thing is one distinct member of mine. And I use it as God to maintain order, the life of creation. And I use it in order to make use of by means now God's divine mercy, now God's divine power, now God's divine justice. So he said to St. Faustina, we have to remember this. I'm going to give the earth the time of mercy, which was last year, and then will come the time of justice. And that's where we are. We have to understand that this sign in the sky this, uh, is, is not, you know, uh, everybody goes, what's going to happen that day? No, it's, it's not that day. It's a sign. It's like when you're driving down the road and there's a sign out there, you know, oh, you we're coming, we're coming towards this town. Uh, the sign in the sky, Jesus says, is going to be greater than the sign that I gave uh, when I came to earth with the star of Bethlehem. And the, the, uh, the uh, wise men were drunk with joy, happiness of what was coming. And Jesus is telling us you have to be exhilarated by when you see this, when you know it, because something is coming. And it will be like a birth, he said. It will be painful at first, an intense pain. Uh, but then what will happen is uh, it will be a new beginning for mankind. And that's what we're so he's saying. We've had mercy. Uh, the year of mercy was last year. Uh, power. Uh, we, we see, we've seen God's power all throughout the last, well, from the beginning of time. We've seen the power of God. And now, now is the time of justice. And uh, we should not be surprised when everybody's pulling their hair out and wailing and grinding their teeth. Um, everybody has to get what they deserve. That's the justice of God. Everyone, for every thought, every word, every deed, they, everyone has to get what they deserve. This is going to be uh, um, exhilarating to say the least. Volume 28, November 24th, 1930. If he comes for a little, this is Jesus. If she says, if Jesus comes for a little, well, I feel myself coming to life again. Ah, the breath of life that Jesus gives me, he embitters because he tells me nothing other than the great chastisements that the divine justice keeps preparing and how all the elements shall put themselves against man. The water, the fire, the wind, the rocks, the mountains shall change into deadly weapons a strong, strong earthquakes shall make the cities and people disappear. And all the nations, not even our own, shall be spared. And then the revolutions 
in which they are they are and shall be engulfed in the wars that are to break out. It seems that almost all shall be caught in the net that they themselves are preparing. And that's that's where we are today. You know, this this whole disorder, it's um, the devil knows his time is coming to an end. He knows his time is coming to an end. So he has to bring as much disorder, uh, discouragement, despair that he can bring to mankind. So mankind cannot think of God and does you know, not even plead with God. Uh, despair is what uh, Judas went through. And uh, it says he, his guts were opened up and he lost his soul. Uh, our job is to trust in God. Jesus, I trust in you. That's the whole year of mercy. We, we asked everybody to pray uh, in that year of mercy for everyone. Jesus, ha- have mercy on us. And this is what we still pray. Jesus, I trust you. I believe in you. I have confidence in you. Even though everything might be falling apart around me, you are my Lord, you're my Savior, my God, you're my all. I trust in you, I believe in you, I hope in you. And as everybody uh, uh, becomes fearful and despairs, um, we will hold our ground and say, no, I trust in God, I believe in him. So this is why, you know, that that um, the book, uh, if you can, it's an app uh, Laudate, 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 L-A-U-D-A-T-E. It's a, it's a free app. Read the lives of the saints, you know, if you can, every day. Read every day. Almost every one of them were martyred. They would not give up the faith. They would not surrender to despair. They, be, they trusted in God, believed in God. And we have to have more of a trust in God because... Um, our our society now is 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 very pagan, uh, and the Christians are hated. Uh, Christianity is despised. So our God is asking us to uh, trust in Him, believe in Him, have confidence in Him. Because when people sin, they basically they're caught in the net that they themselves have prepared. We want to turn away from sin. We want to turn back to God. We want the sacraments and the sacramentals. We want uh, the safety of the Holy Mother Church. We want to be under the umbrella of Holy Mother Church. We want uh, uh, to be close to Jesus, to be close to Mary. So Jesus says to Louisa, So according to their dispositions, the immensity of my fiat pours itself out. It's, It's different effects that convert them into acts over each creature. And one who is not disposed receives nothing. And even though my divine will is always there as operating over each and every one of of them, and since they do not want to receive the good that the divine will wants to give them, then my divine justice converts these goods that the creatures rejects into chastisements. Uh, Think about it. You know, I was just I just read an article on the amount of people who believe in evil, and it's very few. Uh, the the amount of people that believe and trust in God, it's very few. The amount of people who pray the rosary, it's very few. Wear the scapular, very few. Those that attend daily mass, it's very few. Uh, most people are doing what they want and therefore God has to give them what they want that's the terrifying thing we should want God seek God with our whole mind our whole heart and all our strength we should love the Lord our God in the same way and uh, this means Jesus is going to have to take everything away from everybody and this means you have to understand this means electricity this means um Uh, water and food. Uh, See, when you fast, and we we all should be fasting, you have the Tuesday and Thursday fast just on liquid. You have the um, Wednesday and Friday fast uh, away from uh, meat, if you wish. You have the Saturday fast, if you wish. You can, you, you know, make your own fasting, but fasting is part of prayer. 
when you're stuffed, when you're full, um, you don't think of God because you're, you're satisfied. But when you fast, when you pray and fast, you're more attentive. You're more alert. Why? Because you're in need. And I'm not saying starving yourself. But when, when you fast, uh, as the church asks, uh, everything gets in proper order. You know, that balance, we talked about that balance before. And when somebody is uh, overweight, um, somebody else has to be thinner. It's, it's the balance of God, Jesus says. Everything's balanced. If someone is very, very rich, uh, then someone will be very, very poor. Uh, it's, it's, we are our brothers and sisters. We help each other. Um, we balance everything out. You know, the, the, the strong help the weak. Uh, the rich help the poor. Uh, and so, therefore, God is asking us uh, to really have him in our life so everything is balanced. We, the addictions are our society is so addicted uh, to everything that Jesus is saying, I want to free you of this. So just, just think of the, the youth today with their iPhones. Uh, they're all looking down, texting somebody or something. And uh, Jesus says, basically, I'm going to free you of that. You know, people are addicted to their, their cell phones. They said it was a one commercial somebody told, was telling me. They said that uh, every nine seconds, somebody, you're on, you're on your phone. Can you imagine? Holy moly. Every nine seconds? I'm glad I don't have a cell phone. It's, uh, this is, uh, Jesus wants to free us. You know, this, that's slavery. The whole thing with the chip, that's slavery. You can't get anything unless you get that chip. Wow. Uh, people are saying, well, I, I'll be a slave. You know, at least I, at least I can get everything without a wallet. My goodness. <laughs> uh, we are called to be free. We have the freedom of the sons and daughters of God. That's what God wants for us. And that's why the, as you begin to pray and fast in the divine will with the command prayer, we really begin to see some great, great uh, blessings for that everybody is having. It's just, it's just wonderful. So, volume 28, February 8, 1931. Oh, if you knew what sorrow they gave to my sacred heart, such that unable to bear the torment, I am. He uses God's name. God is forced to strike all those who have contributed to such an awful accusation. And do not think that I shall not do it on this very day. In time and in circumstances, my divine justice is arming its arm against them. No one, no one shall be spared. The sorrow they gave me is too great. See, sin is horrible. Sin is horrible. And people are sinning and they're not taking, they're not even sorry for sin. Look at our own lives. You know, if we are going to confession each week, and we're striving for perfection. Uh, the guilt of our sins turns into a greater sorrow. And that's what God is looking at. He's looking at us to see whether or not we are sorry for what we have done. Are we really sorry for every thought, every word, every deed? When you think about your sins of your past and you joke about it there there's there's very little sorrow there oh i remember back when da 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 ha 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 no that's horrible see it's we have to have the understanding of sin as god understands sin and he hates sin he despises sin we want to f see to to have the fear of God is to be afraid to sin. I don't want to offend God. I am terrified of offending God. This this is what the fear of God is all about. So He's looking at us. He's asking us, Would you really be willing to turn away from everything and come to Me, walk into My light? That's what Jesus says. And if you don't, He says. I'm forced to strike all those who have contributed to such an awful accusation. Do you think 
He says, do not think that I shall do it on this very day in time and circumstance. My justice is arming its arm against them. No one, no one shall be spared. That includes you and me. We're not going to be spared. See, we have to, when we go to confession, we have to confess every thought, every word, every deed. It's not just, bless me, Father, for I've said, I was eh, not too bad, not too bad this week. That's, there's no confession. You know, it's uh, our job is to go through our life with a fine tooth comb and then be repelled by that sin and never, ever wanting to ever get close to that sin again. Every thought, every word, every deed. Jesus says very, very clearly, he says it. He says, uh, no one shall be spared, not one shall be spared. Uh, uh, the sorrow they gave me is too great. Since they do not want it in the way wanted by me, this, this is the divine will, I shall keep you, Louisa, suspended from the state of victim, and my divine justice, not finding its prop, shall pour itself out freely against the people. Louisa, see, that's why you, you would hear Louisa would fall asleep. I am sleepy. And Jesus would say, good. <laughs> now, now I can... I can punish. You're stopping me from doing this. You're, you're, you are working in my life, in my divine will. You're living in my divine will, Jesus says, and you're stopping me. So he says, um, I'm going to keep you suspended from the state of victim. Basically, victim was staying awake, and she he let her sleep. Vine 28, February 17, 1931. And seeing you, Louisa, crying so much, my love conquered my will and put a stop for it now. But know that the scourges shall rain down like pouring rain. They, These people deserve it. And when they do not want the victims in the way it pleases me, uh, in the way wanted by me, they justly deserve to be struck severely. Ouch. Do not think that I shall not do it on this very day, but let it be, let a little time pass, and then you shall see and hear what my giant divine justice has in store. So that's a lot of times they have. A, I have a good friend who said to me, you know, all, I've been hearing this for 40 years. You know, nothing's happened. And I'm going, my goodness gracious, like a good father, like a good mother, Jesus and Mary are warning us it's not just once, it's stop it. Stop it. And then the justice is coming. I my my <laughs> my mom used to when we were all the kids were upstairs sleeping, well we were no, we were making noise, I should say. My mother would say, I, she says, I want it quiet up there. You <laughs> know, and we'd be talking and laughing. And she says, I don't want to hear another peep. And I'll tell you, every time she said that, <laughs> I'd go, peep. <laughs> and then we were all called downstairs one at a time. Whack, you know, boom, 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 back upstairs. Did it hurt? I don't know. It didn't hurt me. How about you? It, yeah, it hurt me a little bit. <laughs> it was, she was, she was, she, when we prayed the rosary, we prayed the rosary every night. She was really good. She had the rosary in one hand and a belt in the other. Man, I'll tell you. We prayed the rosary. Everybody else was playing, you know, out on the fields. They got done with their their dinner and they're playing baseball and other things. And we were in there praying the rosary. And uh, everybody in the family still prays the rosary. It was it was tough. Let me clue you. But I thank God for that discipline. You know, I thank God for that. Because when, when everything, I'll tell you, each and every one of us in the family, when, when things got tough, uh, we were on our knees praying the rosary. Because it was, this is what we did. This is what we learned. And I, and I really do show, uh, thank God for, for that discipline. Uh, of course, we always, you know, we're having a tough time at the time, but God is good. So Jesus says very clearly, um, uh, he says, uh, the, the, the basically, you shall see, you shall hear what my justice has in store. Again, that was 1931. And I really, truly believe that the sign that God is giving 
it's like the sign on the highway. Here's the next town coming up. And uh, the sign, it says that it's going to be the greatest sign. And what could be the greatest sign to what, what St. John the Evangelist had in, in his vision uh, of Revelation 12? This is the greatest sign. And when we learn more about this, we are going to be flabbergasted of how much our God loves us. Good daughter, do not fear your Jesus told you this, and that's enough. I am not a creature who can fail to keep my word. I am God. And when I speak, I do not change. I told you that until they calm down and fix things, I shall not let you fall and so it shall be. And even if the world went upside down because of my divine justice wants to punish creatures, I, God, shall not change my word. See, he says, he's given us an opportunity to turn back to him and be attentive to him, to his word. And uh, we go our merry way. So he says, in fact, you must know that there is nothing that placates the divine justice more than that reaches the point of changing uh, the greatest chastisements into deeds of grace than voluntary suffering. So Jesus is, is giving us an opportunity to change the greatest chastisements into deeds of grace when we voluntarily give up our human will. This is the martyrdom of martyrdoms. I will never eat ice cream in my human will ever again. Ever again. And you you, you, you promise God that. I will never dance in the human will ever again. I will never sing in the human will ever again. I, I want to stay away from that. I want to do everything in the divine will. I want to sing in the divine will, dance in the divine will. I want to eat ice cream in the divine will. I never wanted to ever do anything in my human will ever again. I always want to do this with, in, through, and for Jesus. One with him, fused with him in the Holy Divine Will, linked to Louisa. So that when I when I say Jesus, it's always Jesus and Mary. To be with Jesus and Mary in all things. And that voluntary suffering brings you peace, joy, and happiness. And changes the greatest, greatest chastisements into deeds of graces. They want to dictate to me the laws if they knew as if they knew more than I do. Therefore, my sorrow is great. My justice wants to punish those who have been the cause of such great sorrow for me, for God. He gives us free will. And this is why we don't understand the love of God until we spend time meditating on Christ crucified. We don't understand the love of God until we spend time in front of the Blessed Sacrament. This is essential. We're, with the time you spend in front of the Blessed Sacrament, it's not a time to read a book. It's a time to adore God and love God and praise God and thank God and glorify God, to fall in love with God. So when, when you're in front of the Blessed Sacrament, and as children of the divine will, we have to get ready to spend eternity with God. So he's asking us, and this is like St. Teresa of Lisieux said, this is the only time that we can freely, freely love God. Because when we get to heaven, we're going to be forced to be on our knees. We're going to be forced to adore him and love and praise him because he is so beautiful. He is so holy. He is so perfect. that We, we can do nothing but praise God, glorify God, just like the angels. They see God. They're with God and they're... They're, they're singing glory, glory, glory. So Jesus is saying to us, can you give up some of your time to be with me? And again, you know, on the internet we can find, you know, Savior.org is one place where you can go and adore Jesus. Jesus can be in your room, right there with you. You can see him in the Blessed Sacrament. And you can adore him and love him and praise him and thank him and glorify him and worship him and fall deeper and deeper in love with him. If you wish, you have a free will. He'll let you do what you want. We should say to Jesus, I want 
to be with you. Jesus says very, very clearly, he says, justice is going to punish those who have caused such great sorrow for God. 528, March 6, 1931. My heart, my sacred heart is so grieved and torn by, by the sorrow that I am, here is using his name again, I am forced to hide from you, Louisa, the deep gash so as not to embitter you more. And then to see the indifference of some, as you know who they and you know who they are, if they have do, had not done not, as if they have done nothing to me, increases my sorrow, and they force my divine justice to continue to pour out the scourges, and they sh and I shall continue, my daughter Louisa, to pour the chastisement. I told you this before that even just one month would pass of my keeping you suspended from your state of suffering. They shall hear. They shall see how many chastisements shall be poured over the face of the earth. And while my justice does its course, they shall occupy them ourselves. We shall occupy ourselves together with my divine will. See, this is the thing. As these uh, chastisements are being poured onto the earth, we are going to occupy ourselves with Jesus, Mary, and Louisa together in, in God's most holy divine will. See, this is where the ecstasy is going to come in. Jesus is giving us a means to get through what's coming. He, he shows us right here. He says, uh, and while my justice does its course, we, this we're with Louisa, Louisa's with Jesus and Mary, we shall occupy ourselves together by living in the divine will. This is like being on the, the boat with, with Noah. There were, Noah did not get wet. What's coming is going to be glorious. He says, our love works. Our mercy, our power works. Also, our divine justice works for the good of creatures. Otherwise, our supreme being would not be balanced in, in, perfect, in a perfect being but would show weakness if our divine justice were put aside, leaving it aside when there is all the reason for the divine justice to do its punishing course. This, Jesus is showing us his balance. He's, he's given us the time to turn back to him. And he says, like Our Lady said, if we don't turn back now, we won't have the time to turn back. And we can understand now why she says that. Because time is coming to an end, she says. If we are not ready now, then we won't be ready. But this is what we'll be for all eternity. And she's giving us a warning. She's, she's telling us very, very clearly, you know, get closer to my son. You know, pray the rosary, wear the scapular. Learn the round, learn how to pray the rounds. 528, March 30th, 1931. If you, Louisa, knew how the divine justice is armed, you would not be opposed. On the contrary, you would pray me to make you, Louisa, suffer so as to spare in part your brothers. More regions shall be devastated, and misery is at the door of cities, misery at the door of nations. Jesus is showing us this, this suffering that we he's asking of us to go through is not to give life to our human will. That means to be free of all addictions. If you love chocolate, you put it aside. If you love television, you turn it off. See, if you, if you love the things of earth, you're, you're, you're still addicted. Jesus is saying to us, be free of all of that so that you can fall more in love with me. Why? Because more regions are going to be devastated. More misery is at the door of cities. More misery is at the door of nations. Voluntary suffering, Jesus says, uh, will spare, in part, your brothers and sisters. 528, April 2nd, 1931. My daughter Louisa, I am. What am I to do with your pains without your, without your will? 
I do not know to, what to do with them, nor shall they be able to serve me to disarm divine justice, to placate my just indignation, because what the creature has of the most beautiful and of the most precious of all is the human will. See, it's intellect, memory, and will. These are the three of the primary gifts that God has given to man. And he says the most precious, the most beautiful, is to surrender your human will to live in God's holy divine will. This is, the, see, the saints did the will of God. They knew nothing about living in the will of God because this gift was given only to Louisa. So Jesus is teaching us, do you, do you want to live in the divine will? Do you want the most beautiful and most precious of all the gifts that I have given? Surrender you, your human will and begin to live in my most holy divine will. So he says to Louisa, Louisa, your sufferings serve me as support. Once the support is taken away from me, my justice finds no one who sustains it. Remaining without a place to lean on, it made a continuous and terrible scourge pour down during this time in which you, Louisa, have been free of your usual pains. But if the support had been there, even if it had happened, it would have been a tenth or a fifth of what it occurred. More so, since the support was formed by voluntary pains and was wanted by me, in the voluntary pains enter a divine strength. So here we see what Jesus is saying. As you say, I, I never want to do anything in my human will, only in the divine will, he says, you enter into a divine strength. If you are addicted to chocolate, let's just, just say something simple as that. When you surrender it, to God, I will not eat chocolate in my human will ever again. You enter into a divine strength. You are being freed of the loves of the earth. Think about, think in your life, what, what, what do you confess? And maybe a lot of times people don't even know how to confess their sins uh, when they go to confession. They don't under, even understand the, the, the sorrow that they put Jesus and Mary through uh, because of, of, of uh, uh, an ignorance to who they are and what they do. Well, bless you, Father, for I said, I was, been, I was pretty good this week. Really? Then you go home and you stuff your face. Then you go home and you, you sit hours in front of the TV. Then you go home and, and you curse your neighbors when they when the dog is barking and you want to get some rest. I mean, when you think about this, a lot of people have no idea that that to live in the divine will, you have to give up all of that, every aspect of that. To live in the divine will, you have to be perfect. And Jesus is expecting it of each and every one of us who's reading the volumes. He's expecting that. He's expecting perfection. Why? Because when you voluntarily give up your human will, you enter into a divine strength, not a human strength, a divine grace, not a human grace, a divine holiness, not a human holiness. Jesus says, I could say that I myself in your pains made myself support in order to sustain my justice, but now not having your pains, I, God, lack the material in order to form the support, and therefore my divine justice remains free to do what it wants. From this, they should comprehend the great good that I have done to all and to the entire world in keeping you, Louisa, for so many years in the state of voluntary pains. Therefore, if you do not want my divine justice to continue to shake the earth, do not deny me your voluntary pains. Do not deny God. You're voluntary, saying, voluntarily saying to God, I do not want to do anything in my, divine, my human will, only in your divine will. Everything will be put in perfect balance. That, that old expression, a couch potato, you won't be that. Why? Because God will put everything in perfect balance. See, it's not just to be healed. It's to be healed spiritually, physically, mentally, emotionally. This is what the divine will is all about. He says, when my children are healed, then they will heal the mystical body of Christ. That's our job, to heal 
the mystical body. How can I or you heal the mystical body of Christ? By giving our fiat. Let it be done as you say. Not doing a thing with our human will, but only doing everything in the divine will. Because he says very clearly, Therefore, if you don't want my divine justice to continue to shake the earth, do not de deny me your voluntary pains or your human will. And I, God, shall help you. Do not fear. Let me be your God. Let me do, Jesus says. When you get up in the morning, you do your prevenient act. That prayer should be with you all day. I, I, I beg you, Lord, for every, in every heartbeat that beats, beat in my heart beating, uh, breathe in my breathing, every heart beat, every breath of every human that ever existed. I love you, I adore you, I praise you, I bless you, I thank you, I worship you, I glorify you. May your kingdom come soon. May your will be done now on earth as it is in heaven. See, Jesus says, when I find the souls that want this more than anything, that I will give it to them. He hasn't found it yet. He hasn't found it in you and he hasn't found it in me yet. But he's expecting to see it. He says, I want to see it. Because this is why you were created. Oh, predestined soul, this is why you're alive today. Vine 29, March 19th, 1931. My daughter Louisa, my love was not extinguished because of the fall of Adam, but became more in, in ignited. And even though my divine justice justly punished Adam and condemned him, my love kissing my justice without delay promised the future redeemer and said to the de deceitful serpent with the empire of my divine power, you have made use of a woman to snatch Adam, a man, from my divine will. And I, by means of another woman, who shall have in her power the power of my fiat, shall knock down your pride with her immaculate foot, and she shall crush your head. Mary shall crush your head. The Blessed Mother shall crush your head. This is why it's always Jesus and Mary. When you say Jesus, you're always talking about Mary as well. When you say Mary, you're always talking about Jesus as well. The new Adam and the new Eve. Jesus and Mary. Vine 29, June 16, 1931. My daughter Louisa, how many turncoats there shall be? How many masks shall unmask themselves? See, that's what's happening right now in the, in the church. I could no longer bear their hypocrisy. My divine justice was filled with so many pretenses and therefore they could no longer keep the mask that covered them. Therefore, pray together with me that those who must serve my glory, this is us, may remain safe and those who want to strike my church confounded. See, this is... That must, I pray for, I, every day at Holy Mass, I pray for the souls who must live in the divine will. That's you and me. We must live in the divine will. Must serve God's glory. That's living in the divine will. That Jesus says, pray with me, Louisa, that those who must serve my glory may remain safe. That's us. Nothing can happen to us in the chastisements. Nothing. Either there's nothing to fear. And those who want to strike my church, those who want to destroy my church, they will be, remain confounded. Volume 30, December 6, 1931. And this is why the one who does and lives in my divine will tears the veil of our divine power and finds her creator powerfully, uh, that powerfully loves her and draws her, this is Louisa, with his power to make himself powerfully loved. See, he fills Louisa with this love so she can give it to him. She makes, she fills, he fills Louisa with divine love so that Louisa can give this divine love to our divine God. That's what he's doing with us. When we spend time in front of the Blessed Sacrament, he's filling us with divine love. 
so that we can divinely love him. This is how you fall in love with God. So we can fall in love with him, and he says very clearly, powerfully love him. Divinely love him. Because it's Jesus loving in our loving. It's Jesus breathing in our breathing. It's Jesus beating in our heart beating. Tearing the veil, she finds this aquarium of the divine power. And she fears no more because if God is powerful... God is powerful to love her and to make himself be loved by her, divinely loved by her. God fills her with divine love so Louisa can give God divine love. And loving with powerful love, she becomes daring and tears the veil of the divine wisdom, tears the veil of divine goodness, tears the veil of of divine mercy, tears the veil of divine love and tears the veil of divine justice. See, remember the remember the veil that ripped in the in the in the in the temple after Jesus died? He wants more from humans. He gave up his life so that we could have his life. It's very, very clear. And finds as though many divine sacraria. Divine love to our divine God. That's what he's doing with us. When we spend time in front of the Blessed Sacrament, he's filling us with divine love so that we can divinely love him. This is how you fall in love with God. So we can fall in love with him, and he says very clearly, powerfully love him. Divinely love him. Because it's Jesus loving in our loving. It's Jesus breathing in our breathing. It's Jesus beating in our heart beating. Tearing the veil, she finds this aquarium of the divine power. And she fears no more because if God is powerful, God is powerful to love her and to make himself be loved by her, divinely loved by her. God fills her with divine love so Louisa can give God divine love. And loving with powerful love, she becomes daring and tears the veil of the divine wisdom, tears the veil of divine goodness, tears the veil of divine mercy, tears the veil of divine love, and tears the veil of divine justice. See, remember the remember the veil that ripped in the, in the, in the in the temple after Jesus died. He wants more from humans. He gave up his life so that we could have his life. It's very, very clear. And finds as though many divine sacraria that love her wisely and with a goodness most tender and excessive, united to mercy, unheard of. They love her and she finds the overflowing love that loves her immensely. And since the divine being is divine order, he loves Louisa with divine justice. <coughs> and the creature moving from one aquarium to another, not outside but inside of these veils, feels the reflection of her creator and she loves him wisely. She loves him with goodness. She loves him with tenderness. United to, that, to mercy that since her God has no need of it, she turns for the good of all human generations and feeling the love that overflows within her bosom. Oh, how she would want to melt herself in love in order to love him. But justice, preserving her, keeps her the just love and as much of it as possible for the creature and confirms her in divine life. See, Jesus wants to do this with us. That, that paragraph right there, read it, study it, 
put it into practice. This is this is what God wants. He wants you to enter into his divine love, which is everything. God is love. He's asking us to enter into everything of that, who he is. He's asking us to dive into this infinite ocean of divine love, never to leave him. This is what he gave to Louisa, and Jesus is offering this to us. This is not human. This is not saintly. This is not good. This is divine. We become that drop of water entering into the cup filled with wine, fusing and diffusing, and that drop of water that the priest puts in the chalice every day becomes wine. God wants us to share in his divinity, image and likeness. Our God loves us, and he has saved the best for last. And when you read that paragraph over and over and over, enter into this gift. Enter into this the immense love of God. Dive into this infinite ocean. This is what Jesus is expecting. Volume 30, December 21st, 1931. But it is the operating and conquering lives from the earth that we long for and for them to enter while being on earth. This is heaven on earth. Into these fields of ours and operate and act as conquerors in a divine manner. More so, from the moment Adam sinned, he went out from inside our divine will, and with divine justice, the doors of these fields of ours were closed to him. Now they're open again. And we can enter into those fields right now if we wish. Jesus is offering that to us. This is, this is what the rounds are all about, letting go of the things of earth, and entering into the things of heaven. Our Lady said that to Louisa. I will show you a way of heaven and no longer a way of earth. Therefore, this is volume 30, December 25th, 1931. Therefore, do not deny me your company. You would deny your Jesus an outpouring of divine love. And my works would lack the cortege and the appreciation of the creature and would remain like isolated works. And my love constrained would turn into divine justice. Do you see how you're going to help the family? How you're going to help the world? As you enter into this life, the divine will, as you begin to be attentive, to be close to Jesus and Mary, like Louisa, with Louisa, through Louisa, divine, the, the chastisements are going to be lessened. Jesus is, is saying to us, will you let me reign in you? Will you, let, will you let me breathe in your breathing? Will you let me beat in your heart beating? Will you let me gaze in your gazing? Will you let me be the Lord of your life completely? And when we say fiat, he goes brava. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back with you tomorrow for the final lesson on divine justice in the divine will. 3 p.m. Central. Fiat.